Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the sandbox mode for a very brief amount of time, whilst we do the last test ever on the popcorn. Yes, I have finally named my lovely suicide vehicles, and they are now called popcorn, of course spelled with corn, because that's the best way of doing anything. And this is a name a lot of people suggested, and I agree with you, it's a really awesome name. So I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is that in this video we are going to be using the popcorn finally in the campaign, possibly to wipe out the faction we are currently fighting. The bad news, and it really is bad news, is that the final faction, the Scarlet Dawn, aren't actually implemented yet in the campaign, so all we're going to do is utterly obliterate the last faction, and that very well may be the very end of this series, which is a shame, honestly, because I have really been enjoying it, but it does mean we can jump to a new campaign a little bit sooner than I originally intended, and I really want to make more vehicles, especially more flyers, the next time around. I'm not happy with the limited amount of vehicles we've made this time, but that's mostly because we have just been absolutely steamrolling everything. And of course, in a different campaign, if there's no volume limit, we can make some true abominations in terms of size and power. So, let's make sure they can all turn correctly and let's have a quick test. Oh, that was so close. Of the popcorns. Well... You waited until the last second to ram into each other, well done. And of course, the enemy is indeed dead. Each of the popcorn only costs around about 2,000 resource, making them incredibly efficient even if they all get destroyed, which honestly isn't always the case. The AI is far enough back that it doesn't get taken out by the nuke, so they can potentially repair. They do have a couple of repair bots each, so anyway, let's get into the campaign. And let's really scare the enemy a little bit. A little correction to the intro there. The Scarlet Dawn are a player in this campaign. They're just not a stationary faction like all of the others. So a correction there that's going to come into play near the end. So don't worry, we get to see some really amazing Scarlet Dawn crafts including the Nebula, their boss craft, which is honestly one of the most terrifying flyers I have ever encountered. So, back on with the recording of the past. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I think the best tactic here would be to draw the enemy out, which are defending the current fortress, and then once all the enemies are drawn out, we can send wave after wave of popcorns. I think that will be the best idea, but honestly, I would like a few more resources and a few more fights before we call this a day. So, what we're going to do is destroy these two sides here and here, move up towards the north via the west, which is a really weird way of saying that, and then we have all of this space to play around with. If I'm not mistaken, they are currently not reinforcing. No, they are reinforcing just incredibly slow, since I think I have all of their resource zones. And once this vehicle is up here, we will be able to see absolutely everything, which will be rather nice indeed. Now, if this video is too short, what I do want to do as well is fight a load of the enemies against each other, especially a lot of the different factions, such as the, the original hauler faction versus the last faction, especially since we can make the artillery fly above the water as is intended, and stuff like that. I'm just sort of curious. Which faction is my favourite, who we have certainly fought so far? Because I kind of like all of them. I forgot our tank was so badly damaged, in fact it was absolutely destroyed, so there goes all of our money repairing that. It's just over 40,000, and we had just over 40,000, it's about to be fully repaired. Yeah, well, at least our tank's now fully back and operational, and hopefully we can get some money by killing the enemy. If we win incredibly well, which we have been doing anyway, so I'm fairly confident in all of you. Although, 
I do want to check a few things on the tank just to make sure it didn't die because I'm a dum dum. No, all of the checks came out pretty darn well. The thing I was concerned about is that I thought for a moment that perhaps the shields weren't activating when an enemy was present, but no, the control block is definitely functioning with that, so it was just a matter of the entire enemy force focusing on our poor little endgame and then destroying the base, which caused the turret to simply float on the water, which then got destroyed. It's still kind of sad though, because I really thought the endgame would never die. Honestly, so far, the most sturdy vehicle we've had is actually the Blargle, which I will never rename. I keep on saying I will, but no. It's the Blargle. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's definitely, so far, been the most useful craft in our entire force. For some reason, this campaign cannot deal with enemy subs. It's just nothing is kitted out well to kill these things, or at least hasn't been obvious in that ability. So, any type of submarine, and you are pretty much good to go. In fact, in the next series, the next season, the next whatever, I want to go with cannon-based submarines. It's one of the things I've never done before, so probably cannons and torpedoes, or just pure cannon firepower. Especially since, once again, I do want to play one of the campaigns with no volume limit. I want some big builds. Aha! That's why they can still reinforce. They do have one more resource zone remaining. Maybe we should go this way then, completely annihilate all of this, and then we can just take our time and constantly spawn our sillier craft. Yeah, that sounds like a better plan to me. So kill this, kill this, and then deal with that. That is reinforcing so slowly now because of all of this damage. It's such a shame that the artillery is so bugged because that's the reason why this group is moving so slowly. Because it counts the artillery as being in the water in which it can't actually move correctly. And so the entire group is put down to the minimum move speed of 3 meters per second. Which, even for my forces, is really, really slow. Hello. So against us we have the artillery, the artillery, the mothership, which is an absolute pain in the butt, I do have to say. The artillery again, the fast assault craft, and the mothership. Ooh, two motherships. Not exactly what I wanted to see, but that's fine for now. And of course, we want all of our forces in on this. The Blargles can stay... Honestly, anywhere they want. Since they go underwater so quickly once they're actually moving, it doesn't matter too much. Both of you can go like this. And end game, you can go a bit further back this time. I think that was one of the problems. I spawned them way too close, even though the end game has potentially the most long range weapons of all of my forces. So, a little bit silly to spawn them so close last time. There we go. We've made a lovely little semicircle. Or a crescent moon. The amount of lag I just faced spawning in this match was probably the most I've had in months. Now thankfully From the Depths is having a huge update to its engine so hopefully it will be a little bit easier to play in the future since I do have a bit of a beast of a computer so you'd think everything would be perfect. Although honestly I think I can see where all the lag is coming from because this mothership is hugging this artillery with all of its babies. That is a really weird line to say, hugging this artillery with all of its babies. Say it out loud with me, it's really weird. Anyway, carrying on, with that silliness gone. Oh, please move faster away- ooh. What was that? Anyway, most of our guns are trained on the artillery, annoyingly. Incoming missiles from the Blargle, and a massive hit to the side of the Minicorn. Did it do enough damage to kill it? Not this time. Not this time indeed, and thankfully the fast assault craft has been missing almost all of its shots. Oh, that looks so painful. Both of the mothership going after a single one of our Lathrixian haulers. Which, by the looks of things, has absolutely messed up its cannon. That's annoying. Blargle missiles there doing a world of good to the enemy mothership. Well, good is a very objective term in this case, but either way, you get the idea. Is that one of the mothership? Uh, or is it one of the artillery? It's hard to tell, honestly. You are all ignoring salvage. Oi, you, bad. Okay, everything's still up. Health is actually surprisingly good. They're not doing as well this time. 
It seems like a lot of their initial attacks either missed or just weren't good enough to completely eradicate one of our forces. That minicorn looks really hurt on the left, and missiles to the side just running out of fuel. I'm okay with that, honestly. Whoa, the tank is taking a beating again. It seems like a lot of their forces do focus on the tank. Where's their fast assault craft gone? Um, let's just pause time. Fast assault craft, where are you? It's over there, which is probably not too great for it, since, oh, well, it may be able to do some damage to the minicorn, but I doubt its railgun is going to be all that great versus our subs. We're doing a lot better this time. Considering the last fight similar to this, we lost our tank, and a lot of damage was done to some of our main forces. How goes things over here? Oh, a lot of damage. Oh, that hauler is such an MVP. Of course, these missiles are very weak, as we've shown in the past, but either way. They're like six times weaker than the hauler missiles, and seven times weaker than the Blargle missiles per one. Yeah. Healing each other, well done. People do ask, why don't I spawn these closer together? Well, it's because I've done a few tests in the sandbox mode, and their AI isn't that nice to each other when it comes to getting too close, and they tend to get stuck on each other, as we've actually seen when fighting them. Oh, all that damage, but not doing mo the mothership is such an annoyance. Can someone please kill one of these two? And, and here is why we need to change the Blargle's missiles so they have the predictive guidance. I say as the Blargle's missiles eradicate the enemy. Ignoring that. Okay, good. All of the enemy are now in the water, which is great for us because it means the torpedoes from the haulers and the Blargle can all actually hit it. So now we have maximum firepower. The cannons and the missiles are doing just fine because, well... They're kind of bobbing on the surface. How's health? Pretty much perfect. Yep, we got out of this one pretty much scot-free, although it still has cost, of, cost us over 6,000. That's something people tend to overlook, including myself sometimes. I love vehicles that can heal incredibly quickly. So the moment they've taken too much damage and they're no longer being focused on, I have like 30 repair bots going mental trying to heal them. And that's why, as you can see now with the healing here, I'm running out of resources. We are losing resources for this fight, even though it looks like we haven't taken all that much damage. Shell's going in there and... Yep, it's a pretty much done deal now. The enemy are not going to win this, even though they do keep on healing each other because they just want to be annoying and they dislike us. I can't tell why. Okay, that looks like a weird screenshot, doesn't it? That looks like a screensaver, honestly. I would totally have that for a screensaver. I do love it when the steam engines are damaged. Just look at that. It's just, it looks so painful. It looks like something that's wounded and suffering. And I love that. As sadistic as it is, it's a glorious sight. Fights with the mothership do take a long time, don't they? But since it's almost over, there's no point really cutting now or anything. We'll just wait it out. Okay, so there we are. A glorious victory. Um... Yeah, everyone did their bestest, and everyone came out of it pretty darn well. Look, I'm on the Blargle, which is now resurfacing because the battle is over. Because it does that, because it's special and stuff. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to change the missiles, actually, so that they have the target prediction guidance, so that they can counter the mothership and the fast assault crafts a little bit better. Although, I will have to sacrifice a single warhead for this. No longer will we have seven warheads. We'll have a meager six. Uh, except design. There we go. That's so sad. Also, something annoys me about these. No, variable thruster goes here. Where is the variable thruster? Thank you. Why can't you be in alphabetical order? There we go. That seems more reasonable. The Minicorns took a little bit more damage than I originally thought. That is incredibly annoying, actually. So they're going to take a little while to heal up, but thankfully we've just looted all the corpses here. So... 
Sorry. We didn't really lose much resource, we lost a little bit, but not enough to really be a concern. And soon we can have yet another resource zone. Why aren't you working? Receive. Gathering pod. Why you know do the thing which you are meant to do- Seriously, I spawned you like here? Wow. Lathric's best commander. Thank you, now do the drainy thing. That's your one purpose in life. Please say I haven't messed up any of the other- Oh my lord, I've messed up some of the others. Why aren't you working? How did I do that? I guess the problem is, once I capture them, I just leave them where they are, and occasionally they move during the fight. There we go. Please, thank you. Please, thank you. Please and thank you. Please and thank you, and of course, the last one is the end game. The end game, the Doom Bus, which of course will be working. Okay, let's get ready for the next fight. Okay, so what we need to do now is move the enemy forces away from the gathering pod. The reason is, we don't really want to kill the gathering pod just yet. We want to convert it to the true side, the righteous side, the Lathrixian side. So we do that, of course, by shooting down all of its propulsion parts so it can't move, and then torturing it until it's on our side, because we are the good guys here, clearly. Come on, oh, I forgot how slow you're going to be. Uh, guys, get back. This is going to be a bit annoying. But we don't want that circle to overlap with the gathering pod circle, so if we can get him past this line, it all should be good. So, what do we have anyway? Mothership, mothership, helicopter, helicopter, artillery, helicopter, fast assault craft, artillery, artillery, helicopter. Whoa, the amount of helicopters there is actually a little bit scary. So far, they have been the most evasive and actually some of the more damaging craft. Hooray for missiles, I suppose. Oh, you are kidding me. The enemy fortress has actually sent one last attack against us. Fast assault craft, submarine, helicopter, 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 artillery, helicopter, juggler. Um, well then, let's fight these off. Okay, that should be enough. Let's get into this fight so we can do this and then be ready straight away to face off against these guys. Which at the moment, we could spawn them in the land, which would be hilarious, I have to say. Get closer. Close enough. Okay, so, Blargle, you there. Blargle, you there. I'm actually thinking about spawning them a, a little bit closer, just because they can counter the... Helicopters now, so can the two. Ta da! The two lovely haulers, since they all use the target guidance. So let's split you up a little bit. Wait until it's a little bit brighter than it is right now. Yeah, this would make a good fight, wouldn't it? And then we will do the fight. Uh, the minicorns just stay as far back as you possibly can. Well, I waited as long as I could, so here is the fight, and look at that perfect synchronization. Two flares from each, a little bit from their tiny little adorable turret, and two missiles each as well. I really do like these helicopters, they're packed with so much firepower in such a small amount of space, and they even have room for flares. That just makes me happy, honestly, it's just... I like well-engineered things, even if I don't make them myself all that much. Don't put your barrel in this thing's butt, please. That's not polite. Okay, there's both of the motherships. There's the artillery. There's the mothership again. Okay, so, go, go, go. Do some killing. Do something. Why do the particle cannons always go after the minicorns? I wonder what they're set to to do that. Thankfully, those flares don't seem to distract from radar seekers, so that should be fine. However, our flares are distracting their missiles, so the helicopters are being quite well countered here. As soon as the missiles get close enough with their target guidance, it should at least hit a couple of them. Maybe not all, but hopefully some. It's hard to tell whose missiles are whose at this stage. There we go, one of the helicopters taking some catastrophic damage. Oh, that looks so bad. Please don't. Please, could you not? Could you not? Poor minicorns. 
Ooh, a lot of that damage is being bounced off, as you can see, because it all hit the heavy armor on the front. Okay, thank you, heavy armor, for letting us live. A little bit of damage there, losing some barrels on the main gun of one of the haulers, but that's fine. A lot of shots heading towards the enemy motherships, which are kind of becoming one. Did they manage to take the artillery up with them? Well, that's something I didn't think I'd see. Oh my lord, the motherships can now heal each other. That is terrifying, honestly. Absolutely terrifying. Oh, one of the haulers is looking pretty bad, actually. Uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, no. Why are you so... Yes, you have been damaged. One of the minicorns have taken a lot of damage. Yeah, one of the haulers is down by 7%. I'm assuming that's you. Maybe you just took the damage. That's what was causing it to be a, li a little bit unstable. A little bit weird. This fight is going to take so long. I'm hoping eventually we, we do actually win. There's the fast assault craft. Uh, the missiles just don't seem to be fast enough. Even with the guidance modifier, it's just they aren't fast enough to deal with this. They all definitely have it on now. Oh, both minicorns are still functioning, even with one taking quite a bit of damage. That's good to see. The haulers are looking pretty bad, though. Gee, I wonder why. My tank has lost its turret. Because it's being focused on by both of the motherships and all of their little babies. Thankfully, there we go. Shots from the Minicorn doing some really good damage when it got a little bit exposed there. I think we will win this one. It's just going to take a while. The motherships really are definitely the strongest enemy we've faced. Without a doubt. A lot of damage potential and ridiculously time-consuming to kill. There we go, though. Missile's doing a load of work there. Our tank, yep, definitely lost its turret. So it's just the, the main body now. I guess all of those particle cannons do go through the heavy armor eventually. So now we just sort of wait. I made a skip ahead here because we've already seen this all before in the last fight. It's practically the same scenario. So unless something really exciting happens, I will be right back. Also, we have loads of resources. I guess the things we've been killing are very expensive. Oh, the end game taking hit after hit after hit there. From the particle cannon, from the missiles, from everything. It's so horrible to watch. The minicorns are still definitely doing the vast majority of the damage, though. I'm on board of the end game now, so let's have a quick look-see around, shall we? Taking manual control now of the bottom half. If anything goes AI dead, we could jump on it and actually capture it. I'm not jumping off though myself. The water is teeming with missiles and torpedoes, and I don't want to die and have to respawn, honestly. So I'm just hiding on my little raft of safety. Which just so happens to be a floating tank, which is weird, I know, but still, you get the general gist of things. No one just gonna let me just stroll through- Oh! Point blank destruction there from the main turrets! Oh, that was glorious. I say that too often at the moment, but I like a good bit of destruction in the morning. Seriously, it's like 2am here at the moment. From the depths is a terrible drug. So it's lost both of its smaller- yeah, okay, it's lost some of the internals of both of its smaller advanced cannons. That's why it's so weird with aiming, then not aiming anymore. Two damage. No, no AI deaths, just two damaged. So, yeah. Hats off to the creator of the mothership. That thing is brutal. It really is. How much damage total have we taken? Let's see. Oh, no, no, stop, 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 stop. I'm losing health because for some reason the end game glitches out when you turn it out of play. So we lost about... 15k worth of resources, so what I'm going to do, because you are as slow as this is, I'm just going to wait until this gets all the way over here, and then we'll ambush it with our regular forces. Seems good. Seems good. I was just making a few tweaks to the end game and to the minicorn, and I noticed this patch of land. It looks so unfinished, so naturally, we're going to check if the end game can actually climb this. 
It's a fairly steep climb and I don't think we have enough propulsion, but we will try to find out. I've also just looked at some of the video files from this one recording and all of my concerns earlier in which I was thinking, am I going to have enough footage? Yeah, we're going to have a stupid amount. Probably one of the longest videos in the series. I wholeheartedly imagine. Also, I tried to say season and series at the same time there. Bit of a tongue twister. Here we go, although it is choosing quite a weird place, almost like it's trying to cheat. The end game knows how difficult this is. The end game never fails to impress me. Never mind, it seems completely unfazed by this. Oh, or does it? No, it's fine. <laughs> I love this tank, it's easily one of my favourite creations. Definitely want to make a scaled up version though at some point. Although not that much bigger though, I feel like it could lose a lot of its style if it got too big. So apparently right now it's in the water. Yeah, that seems a little bit off, honestly. You can fly! How did that not hurt you? Seriously. And then all of the amphibious controls kick in and it stabilizes. Okay, and now we wait for the fight. So this is what's going to happen. Fast assault craft there, artillery there, sub on this slope. And yeah, it's not going to be all that pretty for them. I can't even see the helicopters. Oh, sadly the helicopters are high enough to not really be affected. But either way, I think it's going to be pretty funny and that's the important thing of this fight. So just begin, I suppose. And of course, combat mode on all, thank you very much. And continue once again. Missiles being released from everywhere. There's the fast assault craft scraping all of its bottom against that. And here are missiles. Goodbye. Okay, you're down pretty quickly. Don't know why I looked away from the action there. Cover your sensitive eyes, children. Things are dying. A horrible fact of life. And death. Missiles, everyone. Missiles and really nasty cannons. There goes one of the lovely helicopters. Who needs your full force when you can use the environment? <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, missiles, please be distracted. Oh, you were just about distracted by the flares. A lot of you missed because of that. Uh, haul up, haul up, no, haul up, no, haul up, please don't go in there. Haul up, bad. Away from the rocks. That would be lovely. I could have totally jumped ship on that hauler. Okay, hauler near the rock. Uh, do you have glass? No, you don't. Good. I'm off. Let me out. No, let me out. No, stop bugging me out. I want to jump. Darn safety features are just too efficient. Safety features. Words. Aha. I'll claim something, even if it wasn't the original intended target. Come on, kill its AI, please. Not too damaged, that's worthless. Oh, never mind. I tried my hardest, but my hardest wasn't good enough, apparently. Story of my life. And you're dead as well. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Absolutely slaughtered. All of the poor water vehicles got so... Utterly destroyed there. Not even a chance, not even the slightest. Okay, now that's over. We can start moving all of our regular forces over to here, and I think I am going to skip this tile, just because... Is there really any point? You, move over there. You, move there. No, that was weird. Ooh, I don't like that. Okay, going to be a little bit sneaky with the Blargles then. Blargles get together with the Minicorns again. And I will turn you into an all-terrain for a while to get over this hill. Meanwhile, the end game, you can go over to here. And you will capture this. And then we can start spawning in all the popcorn here using the healing of the haulers to, you know, make them and keep on sending them in. After we deal with this force. So... Okay, here's the plan. Since they move so slowly, hauler, go and annoy them a little bit and then run back over here. You are actually kidding me, right? Ahem. Helicopter, helicopter, mothership, helicopter, helicopter, mothership, helicopter, mothership, mothership, helicopter. 
That is going to be the most laggy, difficult, and long-winded fight in the history of this campaign. Oh dear god, that's going to be awful. Okay, let's just capture this thing before that starts, please. I think I may need another hauler just to deal some more damage or some more minicorns. Although they do die incredibly quickly, they technically are still the highest damage per second craft we have. So yeah, that is a thing still. Hello, thank you. Jump onto you. Begin battle. Okay, and now we just go ahead and take this for the millionth time. Incoming very loud noises, this is your one and only warning. Oh, look at that for the ultimate taking over. We shot all the way through, took out its AI, and then just carried on through. And we were just about close enough that we actually captured it. Is it wrong that I feel very proud of that kill? Because I do. Now, whilst um, all that sorts out, we're going to go back towards our original locale. Hello, original locale. And our structures are going to be destroyed. Goodbye. Because we simply don't need them. Which means we now have enough for one more hauler. We are going to make another hauler because the hauler currently has anti-missile based weaponry. Which means we can deal with the ridiculous amount of missiles about to come against us from all of those helicopters. Yeah, not looking forward to that all, all that much, honestly. You, heal. No, it's in this one. Heal it, please. Do the thing. Okay, everything get nice and clumped up. We are now gaining resources so quickly since we own every resource zone we've managed to go past so far. Even if we lose this fight, we can be back up and running incredibly quickly and we can kill whatever's left and then start nuking the hell out of this land over here. Plus, now we have this resource zone, it means the enemy can no longer reinforce or simply reinforces incredibly slowly. Either way, pretty much the nail in the coffin. Did you ever ask yourself the question, how are haulers made? How are baby haulers created? Well, here is your answer. Yep. You know what would be awesome? If every single thing had sticky flares, including the regular missiles. Yes, I am that afraid of the helicopter spam currently heading towards us. Also, why is our vehicle so low suddenly? In fact, which one of you is the vehicle? You, back up to top. Hey, Blargles, guess what? There's a really cool craze currently going through the nation. That's right, sticky flares. Every last sodding missile is going to have sticky flares. The enemy are going to be rather annoyed at us, and I'll be rather happy about the whole ordeal. There we go, all is good. Um, yeah, all that's good. Uh, we could add a bit of an ignite delay, because the missiles won't be that close to the blargles. In fact, they will never be that close to the blargles, so there. Click. The final true defense of the final faction is heading towards us. As the sky goes ominously red and then into night. Please flares work, because all of the motherships are going to have missiles, the helicopters are going to have missiles, everything's going to have missiles, and now I realize I'm not even sure if they are using infrared seekers. They could be using the and the radar seekers, but the thing is that takes up way more prep time to add all the AI segments and then use those to hold the radars. It's just not going to happen. We only have the flares to distract from IR missiles. Please be using those. Well, Here we go, there isn't really much else to say, this is it. It is likely the very last true battle we are going to face in this campaign, because after this, we can just send our suicide vehicles. For funsies. Okay, I'm putting the Blargles a little bit closer than I normally do, purely because I want those flares up in the air as soon as possible, and since now they are the largest holder of flares we have, 
it only makes sense that they are up against the enemy straight away. Everything else, standard formation. We have three haulers now. I think we should win this. It all depends on how well and how fast we can deal with those helicopters. They are going to be doing the vast majority of the damage if their missiles are indeed not IR missiles. Because they do a lot of damage anyway and have almost taken out a hauler several times and have taken down the minigorns and heavily damaged the endgame. Okay, let's press begin battle because this is going to take a long time to load The in. enemy forces are so big we can't actually spawn in everything at once and this is with the maximum settings. I can't tell if that's IR or not. Um, the best way to tell actually is to look at our missiles and compare the heads of them. Oh, that looks identical. Oh no, the flares are useless. The flares are absolutely useless. Well, that's great. Well, useless against the helicopters anyway. No idea about those ones. Yeah, they look about the same, honestly. Yep, completely ignoring our missiles. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. So what don't we have spawned in? Looks like the minicorns haven't spawned in. Oh, look at that. This is going to be such a mess of missiles, this whole battle. Okay, two of the helicopters taken down very, very quickly. Both of them, actually. Well, at least one of them, definitely by the minicorn. The target guidance system really has helped out. The missiles are absolutely eating up the helicopters, especially as they spawn in, since it takes them a bit of time to get to full tilt. The extra haulers really helping out here as well. Oh, look at all that firepower. So much shield power, though, against us. Our flares are so effective. Look at that. Most of them going the wrong way there. Although, sadly, after passing them, they do go towards the correct target. But the initial target was spared. One of our haulers has just lost its turret. And a lot of damage has been dealt because of this. Health-wise... Yeah, seem better that No, actually, yeah. One of the minicorns almost dead, as I was about to say. Other than that, though, we are doing okay. I think we're going to win this. The only problem with the motherships is that they do seem to lack quite a bit in sheer firepower. These missiles are just so mild. Yeah, definitely IR missiles, though, so they are ignoring the flares on the missiles of the Blargle and the regular missiles OW of the hauler. So what's not spawning in? Oh, also, whatever I am on is currently dying. It's lost its heartstone, which means it's probably losing some of its engine power. Okay, I'm going to have to jump ship here. This one may be a, a lost cause. Uh, Blargle, you're normally safe. There we go. Even the Blargle took actually a bit of damage. Thankfully, the enemy are now mostly in the water, so once again, the torpedoes are now taking their full effect. Although, currently, the haulers don't have torpedoes because we swapped out them all for missiles, thinking that perhaps flares would help. They didn't help. This really is taking some time. Which was to be expected. One of the motherships is seemingly unguarded by its children. And taking a lot of damage. Oh, it is actually using flares with the radars on them. No, they're ours. They're our flares, dum-dum. They just are very long-range flares. One of the helicopters has spawned in and sadly no one is focusing on it. Also, haulers, were you in fleet mode, fleet move this entire time? Doesn't really matter, honestly, since the fleet move is only sending them over there, but even so. Oh, there's so many missiles. Oh, is that hauler falling? Well, the missiles are still online, at least. But it seems like it has lost all of its movement, at least in terms of forwards and backwards. That mini corner has lost both of its... Turrets, and there we go! We've just spawned in the tank, finally. That's what wasn't spawning in. And now we wait again, I suppose.
Thank you, Flare, there, helping out a little bit. One of the ammo caches just went up on this hauler, and look at that. Both of the ammo caches. It seems like the haulers, all but one, are currently offline. This is the last online hauler. Your missiles have friend or foe. They shouldn't be going after our own flares. Unless the friend or foe has been destroyed, of course. Which it has. Well, great. Now our flares are being used against us. That's just wonderful. This is looking worse and worse. In terms of a battle of duration, a battle of... What's the word here I'm looking for? Oh, well, here it comes a few more shots. Ow. Yeah, the haulers are all completely offline right now. They're just sitting ducks. The blargles and the tank are really all that's still going. Now, thankfully, the enemy are looking terrible as well, but we are going to lose a good chunk of our forces here. Those little missiles don't pack much of a punch, but over the course of an entire battle, well... Yeah. That's pretty much the result. Okay, I'm getting on board the most healthy of the haulers so that I can lend my meager healing assistance. It won't be much, but at least it'll be something. If we can get its weapons back online, that would be great. We're also getting a lot of resources. Oh, the tank has lost its turret this time. That was from a particle cannon shot, by the way. Yeah, that just completely got taken out. Blargles are still going? Yep, yeah, Blargles are still fine. Most of their damage in the form of torpedoes are still doing very, very well. And there goes the helicopter for the most part. Stop taking damage! This is such a boring and slow fight, but it's so very close. Those repair bots are trying so, so hard right now to get that turret fully functioning. The AI is now back on this hauler, and the missiles are now working. I've also replaced the torpedoes again, so now it does actually have torpedoes. The friend or foe is also functioning, so the missiles aren't going after the flares, although now they're not really working anyway, and most of the enemies have been defeated. It's just really, really slow. This battle of attrition is taking a while. This minicorn is actually healed up enough as well to start firing at the enemy, which is kind of funny, honestly. Normally the turrets don't heal up enough to start firing once they're removed during a battle. Oh, the hauler now has the cannon back online. Okay, this is going to be it now. With the torpedoes back online, with this one as well coming back online, we should be just fine. It's just going to take a little while yet. <laughs> this is such a silly battle. Finally, victory. My god, that was such an irritating battle. Okay, everyone, heal up. Just everyone, do the healing thing. Is the enemy even growing anymore? Doesn't look like it. Oh, no, it is. But that is really stupidly slowly. We have got like 10 plus minutes at that rate before they actually send an attack, so that's fine. And this is on times two reinforcement speed. So let's just get some resources, heal up, put the haulers over here so they can do the whole repairing thing, and then we can shove our suicidal attackers against the enemy. Finally. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we can see the end of the world. So this is right up north, and as you can see, this is where it ends. This is where eventually, maybe, the Scarlet Dawn will have their home. And over there we see our final adversary. So as long as we spawn in the suicide crafts and simply move them to this location or this location, everything should be absolutely fine. The healing is almost done, and we are getting resources incredibly quickly, so we should be able to do this fairly soon. There we are. We are now making our little fleet of popcorns. The very first fleet to hopefully end this war. With a bit of a bang. Okay, so one thing we need to do before we get into the fight is to change this. So, I would like all of you to be set for zero except for altitude. That is a huge turnoff for you now. You no longer want to go after things which are flying, only things which are in the water. And in fact, even if they're on the land, that will count as being higher than things in the water. Just because it dawned on me that a lot of the fights against these bases so far 
A lot of things have been a lot higher than the base, but the base has always been on water level. So I'm going to save this one as the new version of the popcorn with its lovely, lovely, what are you called? Heartstone. And this is going to be the new version of the popcorn. They should all go after the correct target. Okay, let's retrofit this and let's do our battle. So, I was reading comments whilst everything was repairing and such, as you can see, and actually looking at the From the Depths forums, because I don't want to end this too early. If this is the victory, I will simply end the season now. If it isn't the victory, I was going to continue, so I thought I would do some proper reading. And after a good 20 minutes of reading, I noticed something repeatedly said. It seems like once you defeat the last enemy, as in the last faction, the Scarlet Dawn does actually spawn. So I've probably actually corrected myself earlier already, but I'm just saying it again because this is the point I've realised. And something terrifying, and this is based off a couple of YouTube comments. I a grand total of about five comments, actually, all stating the same thing. The enemy Scarlet Dawn vehicles spawn at the original location of your MCV, where my MCV currently still is. You know, the vehicle where if it dies, you lose the game. The Doom Bus is currently sitting there and is going to be ambushed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my haulers down there since they can move nice and quickly if this actually happens. And I'm going to move the hauler, the MCV, the Doom Bus, all the way to the very north of the map. So thank you commenters, and thank you from the Depths forums. Also I've just realised it's sort of funny that I had the whole speech about, oh these defence structures won't do any good anymore, and now we're going to have to fight something right there. Yeah. That's not lost on me, by the way. Okay, all of my forces are now where the MCV is, and the MCV is currently just hiding out over here. So, with that, let's get the popcorn into position. A very weird thing to say, especially when you're meaning it to sound almost threatening. Well, here we go. We have a grand total of 14 of the popcorns. I don't know how this is going to go, I really hope it goes well, but I have no idea what the fusion reactor and the particle accelerator cannons are actually like. So, let's have a quick look-see. These are powered by RTGs, which certainly explains their massive cost of 230,000 each, and the fusion reactor... Okay, I thought I was reading that wrong. So, sorry for the pause, but apparently the fusion reactor, despite only being 4,734 volume, costs 1,153,000 resources. Which is multiple times bigger than my entire force everywhere on the map currently. What on earth is the fusion reactor? That thing could be really brutal, I have no idea. Well, I think the corporate HQ is the same at least, and if only a couple of these land, we should be able to win this fairly easily. But it all depends on how good these are at killing our popcorn. Of course, it's foggy. Either way, let's have a quick look-see at the enemy. So, we have the particle cannons here, which are indeed particle cannons. Really, really cool looking ones, in fact. The Photon Cannon Mark II, which looks absolutely phenomenal. Then we have the other one over there, also floating, so I'm very glad we are going for the water. And then we have the Fusion Reactor. So what is this then? I think that's a spinning top on top of the craft, because that doesn't make sense orientation-wise. But I can't see any weapons. I can see a lot of laser stuff, which isn't actually attached properly. It's hard to tell. Okay, that's just a really confusing thing. It looks gorgeous, though. Just no idea of the functionality. And there we go. Straight away, they are firing their cannons. In fact, it seems like the bottom vehicle can also fire, which is really annoying. Here we come, though. One of us has already been destroyed. Incoming the first nuke, will it be able to make it to its target? Yes, it certainly will. The second isn't going off because it's been damaged at the side. It's lost its ooh, control block, but that one certainly hadn't. At least two nukes have gone off at this stage. 
taking control. But is it enough? That's the question. Not yet. Where am I currently? About to hit it? No, missing it! Oh, come on, there we go! Another nuke going off! This has to kill this darn thing! Another nuke! And another one! Oh no, but it's now being healed by its allies! You cheating little buggers! Where am I currently? Am I attached to the vehicle? Well, if not, what we'll do... ...is we'll jump on board one. Okay, this is gonna be a bit weird. Hello! Now, where is your AI? If we can take out your AI, you lose anyway. I think it's in here, if I recall correctly. Okay, we're inside. Oh, come on, where is it? There it is! If we can just take this little block out, we win! We win using the suicide boats! Come on, don't fail me now! Please die faster. That would be wonderful. There we go. We have defeated the last faction using the suicide vehicles and sadly showcasing how weak the nukes really are in this game. Either way, though, the dawning of a new age. Corporation against corporation, mercenaries and wars. These are the things we know, the things that drive our universe. Land, materials, profit, all tangible realities each of us understand. That all changes today. For today, a new player enters the playing field. Spacecraft never before seen, alien in nature. They poured out of the skies at dawn, the light reflecting off the scarlet painted warships. Their motivations are known, but one thing we do know is that they are not here to make friends. Okay then. Um, so yeah, this happened. And now I guess we just wait for the enemy particle cannons to defeat what's left. Are they actually moving? It seems like they are. They've got closer together, which might not be a good thing for them. Look at our craft desperately trying to heal each other. And these things look so confused. Like, what just happened? <laughs> what on earth just happened? They think to themselves, well, you know what? I give up this battle because that means... We can destroy the corporate HQ. Um. Listening. You what? Okay, one second. Corporate HQ, you're no longer in the game. Let's jump on. First of all, let's jump onto something that isn't going to allow us to die. There we go. So that horrible green fog will slowly fade now. So the comments were correct. There we are. The nebula, the fire, the Gemini, the comment, the flare, and the flare, the comment. The comet and the two flares. Well then. The final battle is about to begin. Okay, so the nebula is a very large craft. The flare is fairly medium-sized. So is the Gemini. So is the comet. The flare and the fire. The fire is tiny. Okay, this doesn't actually seem too scary, but I have no idea how good the nebula is, and I'm really hoping it doesn't use too many lasers. But thankfully, we have so much resource now, even if we lose all of this, it won't take long for us to completely reinforce this again. I'm also very thankful for the comments right now, because I would have lost this campaign and then had to reload and kill the last enemy again, which isn't something I want to really do. We haven't lost so far, and that would be horrible, because even if we did reload and then win, it would be a loss. Let's just begin, shall we? Poor Star- oh, of course it's using a sodding laser, why wouldn't it? Again with the minicorn. Why the? Is it because it has so much gun to mass ratio? It really must be. So this is the true end boss. The nebula. That does look remarkably cool. It actually looks somewhat. Maybe people won't agree here, but it looks somewhat like the ox, the oxygen, the Onyx watch. As you can tell, I'm getting very tired now because this may be the longest recording session in the history of me playing from the depths. We also haven't been able to spawn in the end game, so hopefully that will spawn in later. Let's go. Lots of lasers. The Scarlet Dawn does love their lasers. 
Okay, we're heavily focusing on the nebula. That's perfect. Maybe if we can kill this, we just win. We might not need to kill everything. The enemy are using a lot of missiles, including anti-missile lasers. So really hoping on the turrets here to do a lot of the work for us. One of these smaller flyers is taking a lot of damage. Sadly, the nebula is heavily defended in terms of shielding, so a lot of our shots simply aren't getting through. And of course, with the anti-missile lasers, that's a big problem. Okay, first enemy is dead, but it is being healed by the nebula. It's focusing on the minicorn. Okay, it's took out one of the turrets and the ammo capacity. It's also destroyed the second minicorn already. We have three minicorns. At some stage, I may have accidentally replicated one of the minicorns without realizing it. Well, we have an extra one, so that's good. Considering some of their shells ignore shields, that is fantastic. God darn it, though, this thing is tanky. But of course, it is way above the volume limit for this campaign, so it certainly has that advantage. Oh my lord, it's so good at taking out missiles! That's ridiculous! Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, the end game has spawned in, and now it should be online, which should certainly help. I'm so glad those missiles are frag. At least some damage is being done. Oh, some of the missiles are getting through at the back there! Loads at once. A chunk fell off, but it doesn't seem to be doing all that much. Where's the end game currently? Okay, the end game's getting ready to fire. That's always good. Uh, two of the minicorns are still alive, doing reasonable damage by the looks of things. Oh, missiles hitting our craft as well, though. It seems like we have defeated... Okay, there we go. One of the haulers focusing on one of the smaller craft. The smaller craft are not faring that well. The nebula is doing some serious work, though. There we go, it's those lovely orangey shells. That They're the ones which I'm really hoping are going to hit, because they counter shields. Whoa, that did some serious damage to that hauler. In fact, all of the haulers are not looking fantastic right now. Missiles are just not a viable option here. Aha, take flares! Oh, of course, we are still using flares for everything. I wish I had some laser defenses right now, but I didn't think I was actually going to fight the Scarlet Dawn, so I didn't think of adding them. How much armor does this thing have? Die already! Okay, huge chunk of damage there from one of the minicorn shots. Seems a, It seems to be a little bit destabilized, but not much. The tank is sadly right underneath the enemy right now, so I can't really do all that much. There we go, once again, the minicorn shells doing so- actually a lot of damage. Once again, yeah, the minicorn shells from the back turret is what's really helping us out here. Okay, oh, yep, yeah, some serious damage has been done. Oh, look at that. It seems like its anti-missile systems are no longer online, which means the missiles are doing work. And once again, the minicorn absolutely obliterating the side there. It's going down. It's going down. Oh yes, I think we've won this. What's wrong with the tank? Why is the tank not... Maybe it lost some of its guns at the start or something. Seriously? You know you have... Ugh, fail saves to prevent that. Anyway... Not the important thing now. Are there any torpedoes currently heading towards it? Um, yes, but they're being distracted. That's oh no, they actually ran out of fuel. That's the first. That's the I think that's actually the first time I have seen a. Really, the mini corn just killed the end game. Everyone, any. <sighs> If anyone ever doubts the amount of damage the minicorns do, just watch that again. It took like five seconds to completely obliterate the end game's turret, which has only happened a few times in the entire campaign. And there it goes. It's being destroyed. Two damaged, officially hit zero now. I lied, but either way, we are victorious. The par time is only 12 hours. Thanks.
You have given the term hostile takeover a whole new meaning. With the corporate HQs lying in rubble and loyal personnel fleeing like rats, the remaining assets and funds now belong to you. With no one left to oppose your mining rights of this planet, you will become a top corporate powerhouse throughout the entire system. Welcome to the Lathrixian rule. Well, there we go, the campaign is over, and here we are on the main screen watching things kill other things, as you can clearly see. I really hope you've enjoyed the season, and really hope you've enjoyed the episode, even though, most likely, looking at my seven and a half hours of footage I've got right now, it's going to likely be around about 40-50 minutes, maybe more, maybe less, who knows. I'm just hoping that this much footage isn't too much, and the episode isn't too long that everyone simply doesn't watch it, but I think a finale for a season certainly deserves a bit more attention to just a regular episode. So if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you would like to see continued in the future. And don't worry, there is still plenty more to do in this game, including fan-made campaigns. The regular campaign, which I am still yet to completely finish on camera. And, well, I do also need to finish off Ashes of the Empire and look at Dangerous Waters. There is a lot left to do. And thank you to everyone who commented telling me that the nebula would spawn in. I would feel a bit cheaty by looking at those comments, but the only reason I didn't think the Scarlet Dawn would spawn in is because of other comments, so they sort of just negated each other. Although I did get a bit of a warning of where they were going to spawn, my MCV was faster than the Scarlet Dawn craft, so as long as they weren't fighting instantly, I would have still outran them. The MCV was 42 meters per second, the Scarlet Dawn was something like 38. Anyway, thank you for watching, thank you for sticking with me, and thank you for all of the support. It has been lovely. Thank you, toodlepip, goodbye, and eventually into a new campaign.